Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Adventurer 5M Pro high-speed 3D printer from FlashForge. This machine is an upgraded version of their Adventurer 5M with a rugged metal frame and enclosure and the same performance specs and features that a typical Core XY printer has to achieve high quality prints at high speed, including 600 mm per second max print speed, 20,000 mm per second squared acceleration, 32 cubic mm per second flow rate, a 220 mm cubed build volume, input shaping, and auto bed leveling. It comes equipped with a magnetic PEI build plate for good bed adhesion and easy removal, a 280 degree Celsius quick release nozzle that allows you to print in a wide variety of common and engineering filaments, a built-in camera for remote monitoring through Wi-Fi and time-lapse recording, an offline touchscreen, USB and Ethernet ports, a filament runout sensor, and a two-layered internal and external HEPA-13 and carbon air filtration system to take care of any films and particulates that might be released when printing. After removing the screws that lock the Z-axis for shipping, FlashForge recommends applying a coat of the provided glue to the PEI plate for optimal print adhesion. Unlike a conventional glue stick, this stuff can be applied in a very thin film and it dries clear so it doesn't make a mess of the build plate after multiple uses. Once that was done, I attached the spool holder, turned the machine on, and followed the instructions on the touchscreen to start the auto calibration that will perform the bed leveling and vibration compensation processes in sequence. When the calibration finishes, the touchscreen gives instructions for loading the high-speed PLA filament into the extruder, which is provided with the machine in a 250 gram spool. But first, I want to show you how the extruder is designed with an easy to remove cover and a quick release for fast nozzle changes and servicing. Most manufacturers only include 20 to 50 grams of white filament with their machines for the initial setup. This extra 200 grams is nice to see especially in a dark color because darker colors show the print quality in video a lot better than white does. You can tell their machines are tested at the factory before they're boxed up for sale by the different color filament purge during setup. That's always good to see. Unboxing and setting up the machine couldn't be any easier. It's a true plug and play printer. I had mine ready to print in less than 10 minutes. With the setup finished, I explored the features on the touchscreen which include basic machine settings, controls for the X, Y, and Z axes, Wi-Fi and camera settings, air filtration settings, and of course the bed leveling and vibration calibration tools. Once I was familiar with the features, I connected the provided USB drive and selected the classic Benchy G-code file that was included for the first print.
This only took around 14 minutes to print, not including preheating time, and it turned out pretty good for a high-speed print. I don't see any indications of possible issues, but to be sure I printed a few more to test consistency and they all printed exactly the same with no problems. So I moved on to printing the other test files that were included on the USB drive. Next, I installed FlashPrint 5 on my PC, which is FlashForge's slicer software for generating G-codes from 3D models. I had set up the machine profile off-camera, but you can select between any of their machine profiles in the bottom left corner, as well as the nozzle size. If you have Wi-Fi, then you can connect your PC to your printer for remote operation and monitoring through the built-in camera by clicking Print and Connect Machine at the top of the page. There's also a feature for connecting multiple machines if you're managing a print farm. Unfortunately, I don't have Wi-Fi in my workshop yet, so I can't show these features to you in this video. But with the software set up, I decided to download a print-in-place articulated 3D model from an Etsy seller called Flexi Factory Store and set it up in the slicer. I put a link to their store in the video description in case you want to check them out. After importing the model to flash print, it can be moved around the build plate, rotated, scaled up or down, cut and duplicated, and supports can be added if necessary. With the model positioned, I click the Start Slicing button to chop the model into layers and create the G-code. After the model is sliced, the estimated print time and filament usage is displayed in the upper right corner, which would be around 2.5 hours and 60 grams of filament in this case. The slider at the bottom of the page can be used to preview the model layers before sending the G-code to the printer or exporting it to a USB drive for offline printing. As some of you know, I've been working on a custom electric motorcycle project which needs a headlight fairing. I finished drawing it in SketchUp a couple of weeks ago, so I figured it was a good opportunity to try an original print with PETG filament using this machine and mock up that part for the bike. Unfortunately, it's a bit too big to fit on the build plate in one piece, so I broke it up into four pieces that can be glued together after with contact cement. Each piece required custom supports which took some time to set up in the slicer after a few failed attempts because the fairing is so thin and the parts were tall on the build plate causing them to wobble more than usual. But they printed really well once the supports were sorted out and they took around three and a half hours each to finish.
With the exception of the gobs of glue that I spilled on it, the fairing turned out really nice. I'm very happy with this. It's much better than that mess behind it which was printed with Ender 3 bed slingers. So that's it for this video folks. Overall this was a pretty good experience for me. I had a few failed prints because of insufficient supports, but that's not the machine's fault. The auto support feature in the slicer software could be a little better, but unlike some other slicers, you can manually add or remove as many supports as you need and where you need them. The machine itself is very well built and seems to work reliably. I've had no issues at all with it. There were no vibrations working their way into prints, no extruder issues, no adhesion problems. Everything worked exactly as you would expect it to. With the super simple setup and ease of use, I think Flash Forge has a really nice product here that suits both beginners and small business owners really well. But let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you're interested in getting one for yourself, then check out the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and take care folks.